AOC used profanity on the House floor in response to Congressman Yoho, yeah, that's a name, mm -hmm. Congressman Yoho, he's a Republican from Florida, he's a United States Congressman from Florida, he apparently saw her, AOC, on the steps of the Capitol, outside somewhere, and he, and he, and he confronted her because he's, been, he's just sick of her policies that she puts in place. And by the way, this happens in elected poli politics where one elected official, sometimes from the same party, uh, we'll go after another elected official. Yeah, Mark, I've seen it a lot with you. <laughs> <laughs> and they'll do it. And they'll do it. You know, outside the purview of the media, outside the purview of, of li you know people listening or watching, because they want to have a conversation and they're upset and they just want to vent. And usually that argument leads to a better understanding because then the people are like, oh, okay, well, you know what, we should actually talk more and see if we can work on at least some things together. Well, Congressman Yoho apparently approached AOC and she was super triggered. Um, and we'll explain this in a, a minute. This clip is a little long of AOC talking about it on the House floor because she was so triggered. She's not used to anyone ever asking her questions or questioning her policies. Um, and we have the clip on this, and here it is. About two days ago, I was walking up the steps of the Capitol when Representative Yoho um, suddenly turned a corner and, <laughs> yo -ho, yo -ho. and he was accompanied Pirates by Representative me. Roger Williams and accosted me on the steps right here in front of our accosted nation's capital. Me. I was minding my own business, Peter, walking up um, the steps, and Representative Yoho put his finger in my face. He called me disgusting. He called me crazy. He called me out of my mind. Um, and he called me dangerous. And then he took a few more steps, and after I had recognized his, uh, after I had recognized his, his comments as rude, he walked away and said, I'm rude. You're calling me rude. I took a few steps. Yeah, so sorry about that. It, it was a long one, I know. Um, but here's the thing. I'm sure it happened, and I'm sure that Representative Yoho did go after her in a verbal, in a verbal discussion that was very robust. Apparently, she said also, in that clip that he, uh, as the clip went on, that he apparently called her the B word. Obviously, that's uncalled for if that happened, totally uncalled for. And if he had just talked to her and discussed with her the differences that they have and so forth, then she has no business talking, saying that he accosted her. Because a dis I've had many robust discussions with elected officials. Emphasis on robust. <laughs> in including, including in public hearings, right? Where <laughs> yes. they're presenting their bills and they're not being accosted. They're being questioned. They're being debated. But you know, Democrats aren't used to being questioned. Yeah. So Representative Yoho went on the House floor and he had a very impassioned uh, speech where uh, he did initially apologize for perhaps his demeanor. Um, but here's the thing. If he did use the B word, clearly he, that shouldn't then happen. Then you're in the wrong. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It doesn't help uh, in this climate that we have for elected officials it serves to, no purpose, really. It, it really doesn't. They should discuss vigorously the issues yes. and their bills, but not you know to the point where they're putting fingers in each other's faces. It's really not helpful because it doesn't move the ball. Anyway, here is Representative Yoho, uh, a clip of him on the House floor talking about the very same incident. Here it is. This body, I rise to apologize for the abrupt manner of the conversation I had with my colleague from New York. It is true that we disagree on policies and visions for America, but that does not mean we should be disrespectful. Having been married for 45 years with two daughters, I'm very cognizant of my language. The offensive name calling uh, words attributed to me by the press were never spoken to my colleagues, and if they were construed that way, I apologize for their misunderstanding. As my colleagues know, I'm passionate about those affected by poverty. My wife Carolyn and I started out together at the age of 19 with nothing. We did odd jobs, and we were on food stamps. I know the face of poverty, and for a time it was mine. That is why I know people in this country can still, with all its faults, rise up and succeed and not be encouraged to break the law. I will commit to each of you that I will conduct myself from a place of passion and understanding that policy and political disagreement be vigorously debated with there the knowledge go. that we approach the problems facing our nation with the betterment of the country in mind and the people we serve. I cannot apologize for my passion 
or for loving my God, my family, and my country. I yield back. So that's, that's, that's very good, right? Pretty good speech. It's it very moving. good. So maybe, so, so Mr. Millennial Garrick here, should he have just called her a Karen? Oh. <laughs> This is what I said not to do Wednesday. I said, don't start running around and using Karen. Here we are. The cat is out of the well, bag. Would that have been better? So they had a disagreement, and she didn't like it, so I'm sure she can get very nasty, and apparently he did as well. And then the, the, the discussion escalated, at which point he called her the B word, so he's, maybe a Karen would have been better. So I have some thoughts here, and I think I'm going to contend with the boomer here in a little bit. <laughs> Let's the, hear it. So, so obviously AOC is 20-something. So, by the way, Chris, we should, that, that should be the title of this clip. It should be, is AOC a Karen? Is AOC a Karen? <laughs> Go ahead. Anyways. Go ahead. Come that's on. A, that's a Let's good hear one. it. That's a Give good it to one. me. Give the boomer. So, so Mr. Yoho, which is still the best name in Congress. Congress Yoho. As far as I'm concerned. Yo-ho. Um, you know, he's based on the mathematics. I'm going to guess he's 64, 65. Is it really worth it or even necessary to have that, you know, disagreement on, on the steps of the Capitol as people are walking in both ways? You know, one of the things that I think is, is increasingly lost on Congress is civility and grace and the ability to, con, you know, contend with each other on issues. And look, I am all for well said. calling out AOC on, her, on her, her proverbial crap because, you know, I don't think she's a very good congresswoman by any stretch it's of the way. Not very bright either. Yeah. And, you know, and... I am all for Republicans emphasizing, you know, that her policies are being taken as and used as a majority of platform policy platforms for, you know, presidential elections, and, and they would have disastrous in- consequences on us. But I don't think, you know, it, it's smart or even necessary to to be walking up the stairs as she's walking down the stairs, and you know, just confronting her there. You know, there's a place for that, and it's called the House floor, where all this stuff happens and where it should it should stay. You know, and and I, and I appreciate Mr. Yoho's passion. Or in the in the hallways of Congress, it's perfectly normal to have a conversation. And say, hey, uh, you know, AOC, I saw a bill that you put in. Come on, why would you put a bill in like that? Don't you think it's going to affect you know my constituents? And just go down and talk about it that way as to why you disagree with the bill. Yeah. Um, now, of course, there's a lot of things that we don't know. I don't know the extent of what the conversation looked like. We, don't we know. have media, you know, perceptions. We have what AOC says about it. And we have Mr. Yoho says about it, and you know, we can never really know. But, but why are we talking about this on Mark of the Millennials? We're talking about it because this goes to the very issue that we're having in this country right now, which is the inability of people from different sides to have a conversation. To have a conversation. Yes. Um, and that's important, right? Yeah. I mean, it's something that's really lacking. Yeah. Throughout the country, and you got Nancy Pelosi calling federal officials stormtroopers. It's yeah. just everything is so provocative. Every, it's like you know, what is the best way to, to get people up in arms and, and be aggressive and, you and know, to get lots of uh, social people. media likes and yeah. social media hits. You yeah. know, I mean, it seems to be that that's the way it is. Yeah, and, and that's one of the things. It's like you know, I can't speak to, to how I would have reacted to such a thing. I mean, I'm more of a you know, water off my back until I get into my office and then I curse incessantly because that's just how I react to things. But like, you know, I wouldn't have walked to the house floor and been like up in arms about I was accosted on the steps, you know. I mean, you know, people are going to people, you know. Absolutely. So, but, you know, civility and grace is important and Mr. Yoho should should take a lesson in, in you know, when is the appropriate time, but also, you know, we should still continue to call AOC out on AOC things, you know. Absolutely. 